You don't have to dig for gold. You just have to give an old man a foot massage. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Raphael and I'm here to review the third and final part of the reunion to season eight of The Real Housewives Who Had the Nerve and the Audacity of Potomac. So we start the last part of the reunion right where we left off with Gordon about to confess something. And I'm thinking that he's about to say that him, Mia, and Ink are in some type of three-way relationship. But it's actually that he's been diagnosed with bipolar 1. So clearly I was wrong. He says that he's had these manic episodes where he does not remember any of his behavior. And it goes all the way back when he was in his early 20s. But he didn't officially know until he was diagnosed two years ago. He says that this is the reason Mia left him. That there is no other reason behind that besides the obvious financial one. But okay. Gordon we'll go along with your story right I'll let him have this so him and Mia they start crying he also says that he's not suing his family anymore because he realizes again it's a manic episode so as they're crying Giselle she starts fake concerning she asks Mia what's gonna happen now now that you two are separating and you know Giselle is so funny because she'll act so concerned over Gordon but yet use this against him for a storyline in the future so Giselle please save it you should be concerned about how your house looks so then Mia, she responds and she's like, Well, I mean, you know, me and Gordon, we're going to be together forever. Like, I'm always going to be there in his corner. I'm always going to be there to help him, like, forever. Like, we're a team and that's just that. And Andy asks Gordon, So, what's going on with you and her current boyfriend, Ink? Like, are you two okay? He's like, Yeah, you know, we, we have a friendship and... You know, like I said last week, much better than me, but but okay, Gordon. But, you know, I appreciated Gordon's honesty because clearly we're not going to get that from his wife, his ex-wife, whatever you want to call her. You know, the lady sitting in front of him, Mia, you know, constantly lying 24-7. So I appreciated it. And Neka finally gets her three seconds of camera time that she was crying about last episode because Andy asked her about her baby situation. She says that she's on IVF and he tells her, people have been questioning your tagline because apparently you were raised in Wisconsin. She confirms that, yeah, she was raised there. This is a Wisconsin accent. So you lied because her tagline clearly says Nigeria raised me, LA made me, and Potomac will remember me. Which I don't know about the last part, Aneka. You know, I don't think that Potomac is necessarily going to remember you. You know, at best, you'll be a long memory in the distance that we remember every now and then on a good day. You know, we could wake up one day like, hmm, you know, remember that, that new housewife on the Real Housewives of Potomac season eight? You know, what happened to her? <laughs> You know, if anything, your tagline should have been something like, Nigeria raised me, at, no, Wisconsin made me, and Potomac is still struggling to get to know me. <laughs> so then he asks Karen, Karen, what was your issue with Aneka claiming that she was from Potomac? Karen, she was just like, first of all, Andy, let's get one thing very clear here. I never had an issue with Aneka claiming that she was from Potomac to begin with. I just wanted people to know that there's two different sides and she resides on the northern side of Potomac. That is it. That is all, Andy. And speaking of Karen, so this is my third and final reunion inspired look. And it's inspired by the one and only the Grand Dame Karen Huger's look at this reunion. And you know, the more I'm looking at it, I thought it was inspired by Karen, but I don't know. I, I thought it was cute, but now I'm looking like a crumbled up piece of paper. <laughs> Like, I look like a used napkin. Like, I don't know if this is cute or not, but, you know, let's just go with it. You know, if anything, it also holds my chapstick, you know, just in case. Hold on, give me one second. You know, also, if I get a little emotional, you know, I could also, I could also use it as a tissue. If I want to take a nap during this review, you know, I could take a nap and snuggle up. So it's a multi-purpose look. But yes, this is my Karen-inspired look. So Karen, move over. I'm the new Grand Dame. Andy brings up the relationship between Wendy and Aneka and how Aneka was supposed to be introduced onto the show through Wendy. But Wendy shut the idea down because she didn't know her, which caught Andy off guard because Aneka said otherwise. And I don't see an issue with what Wendy did because if she genuinely doesn't know who Aneka is outside of two or three conversations, then why would she bring her onto the show and claim that they're friends when it's all a lie? And I don't see Wendy thinking like, oh, you know, I need to be the only Nigerian housewife on the show. So I'm just going to put out there that I don't know her. That way that could block her chances of getting onto the show. I just don't see her being like that. Because when they first met on the show at the beginning of the season, Wendy was just very welcoming to her. She was very nice to her. It will be different if she gave her the cold shoulder. Then maybe we could side-eye. But she was very nice to Aneka. So if anything, they need to stop introducing the new housewife as friends of the current housewives on the show if they're really not friends. Because we already broke that fourth wall many times. The audience is not dumb. We already know how this whole thing goes. Like, we don't need this whole backstory of, oh, you know, I met so-and-so at a women's empowerment lunch five years ago. And she stepped on my shoe. And now she 
she's my best friend. She's coming onto the show. Like, we don't need any of that. You know, it's so simple. Like, you could bring them onto the show. And it's okay to be genuine with us. It's okay to be honest and just put, instead of putting so-and-so's friend, just put, hey, we needed a new housewife because we fired the last one. So here's a new housewife. Let us know if she's good or not. <laughs> Like, it's that simple, but... And if Wendy was trying to stop Aneka from coming onto the show, then I wouldn't be too upset with it. Because if I was Wendy, I'll be thinking, that's one less bitch I have to worry about trying to compete with me for the middle spot in the intro. <laughs> you know, one step closer to the middle. <laughs> trying to be the center champagne flu, but... Aneka, she starts explaining her side of the story, and Wendy keeps jumping in. And she's like, oh, what, what? So now you're claiming that you know me? And I'm like... Can you just let her talk? And as she continues talking, Wendy continues jumping in. Oh, what? So now you're getting angry? Now you're getting hostile? And NECA claims that she was contacted to be on Married to Medicine, which I wonder how she would have done on that show. Now, paging that they're heavenly, that they're Simone, that they're Jackie, and NECA. <laughs> So they started talking about the Osu conversation that the one and only Ashley Darby brought up to begin with, right? And I wish that Wendy's mom and Lebe would have been at the reunion to explain their side of the story in this whole situation. Because I feel like the issue between Aneka and Wendy is a huge misunderstanding that there's no going back from it now. Like there's a little bit of truth on both sides of the story, but we'll never get the full story. So eventually Andy asks Wendy, Wendy, when do, what does Osu mean? And Wendy said it perfectly. Says, I'm not the one who brought that topic onto the show. I'm going to allow Ashley, who did bring that topic onto the show, to explain it. Ashley, Ashley was like, look around, everybody on mute. Big energy. <laughs> you win, you win, you win. Ashley was looking stuck. And you know what it reminded me of on The Real Housewives of Atlanta when uh, when Phaedra got exposed at the season nine reunion when uh, Portia was like, you know, since Candy sent me a season to sis, I'm not allowed to talk about it anymore. So I'm going to let the person who told me speak for themselves, Phaedra. <laughs> Same situation because Ashley and her empty bank account, she's just sitting there looking stuck like, uh, you you know what it means. It You know, uh, it means, uh, you know, it, 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 you know, you know what it means. <laughs> I'm like, Ashley, so dumb. But Aneka said it perfectly, though. Aneka tells Wendy, Wendy, you know, me and you, we were bumping heads all season when you never came at Ashley for even mentioning the Uso conversation in the first place. She's the one that brought that onto the show and you never came at her. And Wendy, she made a good point. You never confronted Ashley about anything. I mean, now you kind of did, but it's too late now. You never questioned her about it when she's the one that kind of put this whole thing in motion. And unfortunately, Aneka, she took the bait, you took the bait, and she put both of you against each other in a way. And, you know, looking back on it, Ashley, oof. And, you know, Ashley, you could apologize as many times as you want for the things that you do on the show. Your apologies don't mean a thing if you're constantly always causing chaos. So then we see the WWE Sesame Street Fighter champion, Kiarna. She comes out and she looks so beautiful. She has the best look at this reunion. The dress, the jewelry, the hair, the whole look was nice. Last week in my review, I did a reunion-inspired look based off her look alone. So she sits right in between Wendy and Candace, and they're much better than me because I would have told her, like, look, I get it that everybody loves you because you fought Tickle Me Elmo, and I get it that you were doing it in my defense, but this is still my show, so you're going to have to scoot over right next to Ashley. <laughs> But she sits in between them and Andy already with the messy questions. So how did you feel when, you know, your supposed friends, Wendy and Candace, they didn't come to your rescue when you were sick on the trip and Giselle did? Candace said it perfectly and I said it too at the time that Giselle only did that to make Wendy and Candace look terrible. Luckily, Kiana didn't fall for it, but that whole situation could have turned left quickly. And Kiana came to this reunion not knowing who's coming back for next season. So let me just kiss everyone's ass. She started going around like, Karen, I love you. You're the grand dame. Giselle, is Jamal coming? Of course not. No, oh, I love you too. You look so good. I, for, for once, you finally look nice. Robin, I love that you don't care about nothing. I love you. Uh, Mia, Mia, you're such a you're such a pathological liar, but I love you anyways. Oh, Candace, I streamed your album like three times. I love your song, Drive Back. I love it. Let me be on the remix. Wendy, oh, I love you and all of a hundred of your careers that you keep going after. I love it. Ashley... Uh, Aneka, I, I just love everyone. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, we get it, Kiana. We get it. You're going to come back for next season. You're going to be friends with everybody. We get it, right? They start discussing Wendy and all 500 of her careers. And I don't believe that anybody should put themselves in a box. Like, if Wendy wants to be a fisherman one day, be a mechanic on Tuesday, be a teacher on Wednesday, and be an astronaut on Friday, then so be it. It's fine. <laughs> You know, continue doing you, Wendy. Then we talk about Ashley. See, now Ashley, Ashley needs to get a couple of those careers that Wendy has because what are we doing? They start discussing her divorce or whatever you want to call it that she has with that zombie Michael. And then here goes Robin. <laughs> Like, you would think that Robin would have ran out of audacity already with the first two parts of the reunion, but no, she still has some in her tank because now her and Ashley, they're having a clown-to-clown -clown communication and she tells Ashley, Ashley, why are you not rushing to get a divorce from Michael? The same reason that Juan was rushing to pay for somebody else's hotel. Because they want to. Like, Robin, Robin is the first one in line every single time to question anybody else about their marriage except her own. Like, just crazy to me. And Ashley, Ashley, even more pathetic. She was just like, you know, me and Michael, you know, we realized that, we, you know, we're in a toxic cycle because after we were done filming, you know, everything was good and then things got toxic. And I just feel like he's narcissistic and, you know, it's fine. You know, I massage his feet. Mm -mm. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish this review, you know, respectfully to everybody. Like, I just love... One second. Ashley, you're doing what to this man's feet? You know, I've said it before, it's no secret that I have a foot fetish. I love feet, but not for Michael. Like, absolutely not. On top of that, he's not even paying you correctly. You're over here bragging about, oh, you know, he lets me order Uber Eats whenever I want to. <laughs> I get to supersize my meal. Like, no. Whenever you whenever you could advance and say, oh, he lets me order Chanel, Prada, Gucci, you know, Louis Vuitton. And then, and then maybe, maybe he deserves a little squeeze here and there on his toe. Maybe. But until then, Ashley, you need to raise your standards. You know, Ashley is the type that's, that, that took the song Cater to You way too serious. Like, she probably sees Michael and she sings to him like, Let me help you take off your shoes. Untie your shoestrings. Take off your cufflinks. What do you want to eat, Michael? I can't afford it anyway. Let me feed you. Let me run your bath water. Like, no, you're just supposed to sing the song. You're not supposed to actually do any of it. Like, get off the floor, Ashley. Like, what are you doing? Like, you and Robin, like, oh, just terrible. Just, just call me on a three-way. We need to talk, but... That was that. And then she starts talking about how, you know, when she met Michael, she had all these careers planned in her head. But, you know, Michael came into her life and he told her, like, look, if you're working all the time, you can't really travel with me doing a nine to five. So she just took off with him because obviously he had money. And, you know, this is why I always say you have to have your own stuff, regardless of who you have, who you with or whatever. Like, you need to have your own stuff. You need to be dependent because just like that, somebody could take it away from you. Next thing you know, you're massaging his feet. You know, like, just know it doesn't matter how much money somebody has. I mean, <laughs> you know, I guess it depends. <laughs> she starts calculating, you know, I feel like once I leave him, I'm going to have all this money. And, you know, GNA is doing really good. I think that me and Giselle are going to profit uh, like $2. And then she starts doing all the math. And You know what? Let me do the math for her. Hold on. Let me get my pen. My notebook. Okay, so let's see. GNA is gonna make about two. Let's be nice and like five dollars, right? So GNA clothing line is gonna make five dollars plus the divorce. She's gonna get maybe two dollars out of Michael. Maybe if she squeezes his feet a little nicer, maybe she's gonna get three. So calculate that, divide that by two. She's probably gonna lose her Bravo check because she's probably not gonna come back for next season. So that's a big portion. So let's see. Um, okay, and then you divide the two, add the three, and then let me put a smiley face here. I think in total, Ashley, you should be getting about maybe $7. <laughs> because that's what it's looking like. It's just so sad. Like, she went through all of this trouble with Michael just to end up with what? They start discussing the infamous fight that happened at GNA's fashion show, and Kiana is explaining her side of the story, Candace is explaining her side of the story, and what led up to Tickle Me Elmo getting dragged all over the floor. Mia tells Candace, well, you know what? Cookie Monster was actually on a rampage that night because she came up to me. She confronted me about what I said last season about calling her a four, but, you know, I de-escalated everything. And then this is where the bullshit started because the
because the audacity that Robin had jumped over to Mia and Mia tells Candace, you can't just react like that to everyone. You have things to lose. And I'm like, since when is Mia Mother Teresa all of a sudden? Like, Mia, you literally forget that just last season you threw a drink in Wendy's face. And then two seconds later, you swung your purse at her. And now all of a sudden you're lecturing somebody else on how to and not to react to certain things. Like, that is funny. I'm pretty sure that if Cookie Monster was to throw anything in your direction, you wouldn't just stand there and just take it like, oh, you know what? Let me not react to this. So then Candace, she was like, no, I can't react to this because she came up to me. I told her I don't want nothing to do with her. She walked away. And then that's when I started calling her names. And, you know, putting this whole fight thing to the side... This whole, pr the whole root of this issue is Ashley. If it wasn't for Ashley bringing Cookie Monster onto the show, none of this would have happened to begin with because people just think that Candace just started calling her names out of nowhere when it was all because, you know, she started, you know, lying on Chris saying, oh, you know, he was trying to get with me. He was trying to do this, that, and the third. He was putting out all these rumors, you know, trying to damage their relationship, their image, his image. And then now all of a sudden, Candace is just supposed to say like, oh, okay, you know what? Fine. I forgive you. Let's move on. No, I'm calling you names every single time that you're around me or at least any time that I want <laughs> you know and again it's all because of Ashley Ashley she continued trying to make a thing between both of them like you know what I feel like she has something to tell you Candace what did Candace tell Ashley last season no ma'am no ma'am I don't want anything to do with her or you know you I don't want anything to do with your friend leave me alone but Ashley she kept insisting like no I want to I want to I want you to talk to her it's very rude that you're doing this to my friend and now look the audacity jumped from Robin to Mia, from Mia to Andy to Giselle because Andy asked Giselle, Giselle, what do you think about this whole situation? And I'm like, what does it matter? She wasn't even there to witness it, right? Giselle, pff, she had the nerve and I cannot believe it. Part of me could believe it, but part of me could not believe it because she's like, I feel like it's Wendy, Candace's, and Deborah's fault that this whole fight happened to begin with. I'm like, Giselle, you cannot be serious. But she's serious. But you cannot be serious. But she is serious. Like, that's the crazy part. Like, your hatred for both of them goes that deep that you could really blame them for something that wasn't even their fault to begin with? Like, that is crazy. Did we not see the same footage? Like, again, like I said before, if that footage hadn't leaked, who knows what kind of narrative they would have ran with. I mean, look, the, the footage is out there and they're still trying to run with this narrative that for some reason Candace started this whole fight. Like, it is crazy to me. Even Wendy looks shocked. She's looking at her like, what do you mean, Wendy? Like, and if it wasn't for Mia, because Mia jumps in it and she's like, Giselle, no, Wendy had no involvement in it. Now Giselle is just like, you know what, fine. I'll take Wendy out the equation, just like how she did with Chris. Oh, you know, one second he took me to the room. No, one second he forced me into the room. No, one second I was in a room. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I meant to say this. Like, it does not work like that, Giselle. Like, you can't just blame somebody for something like this. And then two seconds later say, oopsie, I didn't mean that. You know, I didn't mean to say your name. Like, no, you don't even have to like Candace, but come on now. Like, the footage is right there. And Candace, she starts getting emotional. She starts crying and she's like, I can't believe this. Like, of course, I'm getting blamed, including the dumbass host, Andy. He's almost kind of piling up on top of Candace too. Like, wait a minute. So why did you pick up the bottle? Like, it's just, it's just a bunch of clowns at this reunion. Like, it's just insane to me how he is so biased. But, you know, this is no surprise either because he's always doing this with every housewife. And, of course, it always goes back to Monique and the way they treated her in the situation versus Candace. Oh, you should have never got physical. You should have used your words. We can't be around you. You're too violent. We need a bodyguard 24-7. And now, all these years later, Tickle Me Elmo, she's the one trying to get physical with Candace. Yet, who's at fault? Candace. And if that's the case, that Candace's mouth is so reckless that she deserves to get dragged, do the rules also apply to you, Ashley and Giselle? Because your mouths are also reckless as well. So what stops anybody else on this cast from just going up to one of you and just hitting you? And then is that going to be justified because your mouth was also reckless? Or do the rules only apply to Candace and Wendy? Like, again, the line is always moving. And Giselle, Giselle, you are literally an anchor on this show. Like, Giselle is literally stopping this show from moving forward. And she glued her feet down to the ground. And she refuses to budge. And you can't be like that, Giselle, on The Real Housewives. Because the whole premise of the show is conflict resolution and moving on for the better of the show. But Giselle, she refuses to do that. She's stuck in her way. She is too stubborn to forgive anybody. So she's just there. And that type of energy causes friction within the group. And now everybody feels entitled to, oh, well, if Giselle could do it, if she could hold grudges and not talk to so-and-so, then I could do it too. 
and now we're stuck with what we have now. On top of that, Karen. Karen is also part of the problem as well. Karen is too busy trying to get the audience and even the cast members and Andy to like her. You know that she refuses to take a side to certain things. And in a situation like this, I'm sorry, Karen, you need to take a side. You can't be, uh, you know, what is, what's her tagline again? You know, humping the fence or whatever the hell she said. <laughs> And I can only imagine how Candace and Wendy feel just sitting there being blamed by everyone, including the host, for a fight that you didn't even start. And it was probably at this point that Candace decided like, yeah, I'm walking away from the show because this is too much. They're making me seem like I'm crazy, like I'm the problem. I'm just gonna walk away from it. And I hope that Wendy actually follows in her footsteps and she also leaves the show as well because I do not want Wendy to be a target for next season because you know it's gonna happen. And she'll be good without the show regardless because she's already an astronaut on Mondays. I believe she does her YouTube show on Tuesdays. She's a scuba diver on Wednesdays and I believe she teaches on the weekends. <laughs> You know, she has like a million jobs that she could do, so she'll be fine. But, you know, that was that. And if I was Candace, whew, I would have got up. I would have cursed everybody out. I would have cursed out Robin, the empty chair behind her, Giselle, and her pretty dress, Karen, Andy, especially Andy, Mia, uh, not Kiarna. Ooh, I don't want to get the Kiarna treatment. <laughs> And Ashley, and I would have knocked down all the mannequins in the back right before Kiana leaves the stage. She tells Karen, thank you so much for being like a mother to me, you know, for sticking by me that entire night. I really appreciate that. Karen, it's really hitting her. She's getting emotional. She's looking at her like... No, I, I, I get it, Kiana. I get it. No, no, for sure. I'm always going to be there for you. I'm pretty sure that we as ladies, we will always love to stick by each other, including Robin. Even Robin will stick up for me. Right, Robin? Robin was just looking at her like, mm-hmm, with her bob. <laughs> But that was a cute little moment, but Karen's still full of shit. So Kiana, she leaves. I hope that we do see her more in the future or in next season. I love Kiana. And that was that. Eventually, Andy's like, so, you know, is there anything else that we need to talk about or, or you know, finally end or maybe have some type of conclusion or whatever? Nobody said anything, you know, besides, you know, Wendy and Aneka, they're apologizing to each other. Wendy's like, I'm sorry for calling you a crackhead. And, you know, Wendy, yeah, you were completely in the wrong for that. But that was that. Giselle and Candace, it was no point. Giselle, she's like, well, I'm just waiting for her to take accountability. But what about you? Like, it's just, it's so insane to me with Giselle. And Giselle, she's like, oh, I can't wait till this whole episode airs. And the tweets, uh, Giselle, no. If I was you, I would not look through the little hashtag of R-H-O-P. <laughs> It is not looking good for you right now. So I'm not really, that's how you know that she's extremely delusional because the fact that she even thinks that this whole narrative is going to play out in her favor to the audience, you know, like what world is she living in? Like clearly she believes the bullshit that she puts out there, right? They eventually give Andy a crown. They crown him the king of something, even though it was a sorry excuse to try to get their jobs back for next season. I see what they're doing. But that's officially an end on season eight of The Real House of Potomac. And what a bitter way to go out like this with this reunion. Like, you know, no resolution, no nothing, just, just, just confusion. You know, I just, like I said before, I feel like they should either reboot the entire show for next season or start off with The Real House of DC season two and go from there. But, you know, even look at my reunion outfit. <laughs> It started off with so much life at the beginning of this review, and I'm not sure what happened. Like, look at this. I really do look like a wet paper towel. Like, this is concerning. I'm going to take this off. But And thank you to every single one of you for taking the time out of your day to watch my reviews, leaving your comments, your opinions, your thoughts. I read every single comment, and I appreciate all the love that you all show me. This upcoming Saturday, April 20th, is actually my birthday. So I'm flying out back to the East Coast, to my home state of New Jersey, to surprise my family. And they have no idea that I'm coming. I'm just showing up real housewife styled. <laughs> like, surprise, bitch. I bet you thought you seen the last of me. I'm back for another season. <laughs> But it's been years since I spent a birthday with my family. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to that. So I'll be gone for a while. But when I come back, I'm not really sure what to review. Because, I mean, there's nothing else to really review. The Real Housewives in New Jersey, that's coming back soon. That's not happening. <laughs> And it's such a shame, too, because I'm from New Jersey, so you would think that I'll be their their number one fan. But no, I reviewed that show one time and one time only, and that was enough. 
I can't do the whole Melissa versus Teresa thing for a million times already. Like, just recast the show already. The Real Housewives of Dubai, they're coming out soon. Their trailer looks really good, but they come out in June. So I started trying pop culture and celebrity news videos, but there hasn't really been much in the media lately. And I do watch a lot of movies, so I was thinking of incorporating movie reviews as well. But again, let me know what you all think about these ideas, or if you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments, as well as leaving your thoughts on this whole entire season of The Real Housewives of Potomac and this last part of the reunion. But until next time, thank you all so much again for supporting my channel. I really, really appreciate that. Bye, everybody. Mwah.